preview monitor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the WCS Season 2 Grand Finals. <laughs> Guys are awesome. Really good crowd here at Gamescom, fantastic. Uh, Chobra, we saw uh, another fantastic group play out. We've still got one more game to go. Did that go more or less the way you thought with Bomber winning? Well, I mean, you know, I was saved by Bomber and the whole thing, so I'm feeling a little bit safer now. But Bomber showed some really good plan. Like I said, you know, he's taken down first in the same way before, where he just sticks to his plan, goes full out aggression, and he's analyzed it perfectly. He says, you know, Protoss can't handle that that well, and that's why I stick to it. So you got to do what it works, you know? Whatever it takes. Uh, let's show you the bracket from Group B, just to confirm the fact that Bomber is safely into the quarterfinals. He joins Jadon from earlier on. That's two groups down already, and we've still got two groups to play out this afternoon and this evening. The uh, last place match that you see on your screen right now will actually be played tomorrow morning. So we'll have all four of those, which kind of makes it interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, there's a lot of suspense, and I'm sure those eight players who have that last match left, they're not going to be able to sleep well tonight, Paul. They need to, but it'll be very hard because it's, it's all on you now. All eyes on you to see if you can make it to that top eight. Yeah, difficult for them. Uh, we are going to move on to Group C in uh, just a few moments' time with some player announcements, obviously, with our first game here on the stage. Time to reflect back, I think, as well, on some of the players that have played in this group. Let's show you the group, because there are four players in it, and uh, they are a stunning lineup. For me, this is the group of death, William. It, it, it's, I mean, you've got Nani Wa, the great European hope, potentially re trying to replace Stefano. You've got Duck Duck, winner of Europe in there. And then you've got Tasia, who wins all the summer events every year. And you've got Innovation, the world's best player right now. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't blame you for calling it the group of that. Innovation, also the only player to be returning to a w season, WCS season final. He was the only player that's left from season one finals, which is actually quite incredible for him to last out among those 16 players. Yeah, I mean, he, he's the defending champion from season one worldwide. He's the runner-up from season one career. Uh, semi-finals this season he's like 3,000 points ahead of him he was slight exaggeration he's not quite that far ahead, but he is top of the pile by a long way do you see any way of the other three guys being able to challenge him in this group I mean I do because here here's the thing innovation he used to be called the hell Batman for good reason but then he admitted that he kind of went back to being a hell bat boy for a little bit and he's fighting to get back he's shown some improvement but innovation admitted himself when I had an interview with him where he said you know what, I think for my you know, my own skills right now, this game is merely playable. It's not like I can excel at it just yet. I haven't cracked it ever since the Hellbat nerf. And when a player, I mean, okay, innovation might be being a little bit modest there, but you know, let's, let's I mean, face it, his, his grades are good, but not as good as they used to be. And then we have Duck Duck, Naniwa, Tasia, all these guys who have so much momentum right now coming into this tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Let's show you the bracket for Group C. This is how it lines up. As you can see, the uh, matchups on your screen right now. Uh, interesting the way that the groups have fallen, isn't it? Innovation versus Tasia, totally Korean game. And then Duck Duck Naniwa, straight out of the European League. So yeah. they've almost got to play each other again. I mean, that you know that will be very fun to watch. And I'm interested to see Naniwa you know, coming back with fire and being like, you know what, Duck Duck, you showed great performance, sure. But, you know, I am going to be the new European hope. I'm going to take down, and I'm going to take down the man who took that European title from the Europeans, so. Well, before we invite the players to come out, why don't we check in with our commentary team and get their thoughts on the group of death. Thanks a lot, Red Eye and Chobra. Uh, Rotterdam. We are casting together for the very first time. We've, we've been friends. We've known each other for like four or five years now. But it just never lined up. We never cast together. I know. Whenever we were somehow at the same event, we always brought our regular partners with. But I have to admit, I'm kind of happy to swap you out for Mr. Bitter once. Even we're, though Ben we're is swinging near today, <laughs> Rotterdam. And we're going to be casting a great match for our first one. Innovation. I love innovation. I know. I have and to admit, you know, I've been meeting all these players for so long, and every now and then, every now and then you meet like one new player, and it's always kind of cool as you're a commentator as well, because at the end of the day, we're just talking of lovers, so when you meet someone you really look up to, it's cool. This morning, for the first time, I met four players that I've never met before, and I just like walked up and they shake my hands, and it's like, you look into Innovation's eyes for the first time, you're like, well, I actually really admire you. I was like a little starstruck. Nah, I well, like, I, <laughs> why do you admire him, I guess, is a, a good way to hype this match correctly. Well, this is, 
Have you ever seen someone play StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm the way he did in no, the last few months? It's certainly just... not. Oh. This guy is the greatest mechanical player in the entire world. He macros. He's so on it. He just like he will spend every mineral, he will hit every depot, and he will do everything else at the same time. It's it's something that no one else is quite doing yet, and I think that makes him actually a favorite for the tournament. No, he definitely is. I mean, he's the reigning champion, so once more he made it so far in Korea. He's the only player that it can actually came back from the last 16. Uh, he is definitely one of the favorites. Let's not put too much pressure on him then. Certainly you, you should be careful yeah. using your words, but uh, it's going to be so much fun seeing him. But this is a tough group, man, and he's going up against someone I, who, I think it's safe to say he's slowly but steady, becoming one of the most successful Star Trek 2 players of all time. Yeah. This guy has won five international premier between brackets, because a few, you know, you could say, like, was it really a premier tournament or not? Mm -hmm. But he has won five international big tournaments already. There are not many people who can say they won five international no, tournaments. No, I mean, you can't even say it, because MC has won almost all of them, so, yeah. like, no one else has a chance to win five. But... Tasia is an amazing Terran player. He was a top-end Code S player even yep. in Korea before he started traveling all the time. So, I mean, this is definitely a guy that could possibly make a little bit of an upset here. Let's back up for a minute because Innovation, his TBT, let's, he did get 4 would by Maru, okay? Is, what does that mean for this match? Like, does Innovation know how to TVT still? Oh, I definitely think he does. I think what we saw back then was just Maru being extremely smart and not playing TVT, but playing TV Innovation. Yeah. And he was doing, <laughs> and he was doing that really well. TV uh, Innovation, I yeah. really like that. It's good. Well, I, I think that was pretty much the case. Huh. On the other hand, if you look at Teja, you know, Teja, he qualified from WCS America. A lot of people are, are starting to slowly say as well, like, oh, America might even be stacked more than Europe right now with all those Koreans coming over and even a couple of really talented Chinese players. Mm -hmm. But if you look at Teja's run through WCS America Season 2, you know that he's only dropped four maps, and all four of those maps, despite uh, finishing top four, and it seems like, ah, oh, he had a good tournament, but how did he get there? Was it a love to once? No. Mm -hmm. Innovation, I mean, Teja only dropped four maps the entire tournament, and all four of them were against Polt. That's Pol pretty crazy. Yeah, and if you go even further, it's like Polt only dropped four maps the entire tournament, and all four of them were against Teja, so you could say that Whoa. Teja and They're Paul, both the champion, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's actually, that's some good stats right there. It was crazy, it was bizarre. And their series were so close, it was either 2-1 or it was 3-2. The Marine tank control was fantastic. Teja just coming off two pretty big tournament wins, Home Story Cup mm. 7 not too long ago, Aces Rock. He has been traveling a lot though, while Innovation, you could say, has been more steady at home and has been able to practice perhaps a little bit more on a regular basis. I do have to agree with that. And Innovation does have a lot of stage experience too because he's making it so deep in these tournaments. So I wouldn't even give Teja a big edge there, though I would give him a little bit of an edge because of how much more he does travel. Well, uh, let's go ahead right now. We'll talk more about this in a minute because this is like really interesting trying to figure out what's going to go on. But let's start over to Red Eye as a special little uh, interview for us, I think. Yes, indeed I do. Uh, it's always nice when we get the opportunity to introduce you guys to someone who doesn't actually get much camera time uh, because basically he's behind the camera most of the time. Uh, it is, of course, the one and only, the observer of the tournament, Funker, everyone. Good, good to give you some camera time. Um, you've, uh, you've seen a few of the games so far, obviously. We've seen them all that we've shown here. Of the games we've seen, what have you enjoyed the most? Um, I would say... Bombers TVP because the guy is like so good. Like, yeah, he was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't want to play late game, so when he knows he can can win, just pull out all the SCVs and then crush him. So of all the players that are in the world uh, season final, other than innovation, which you're not allowed to choose, who stands out the most? Uh, I think Rain is really, really good, even though he lost his first series. Uh, and then afterwards, I would say Maru. Because the guy is so short, you don't see he's really good, but he's actually really, really good. Like, the, uh, have you got an itchy, have you got, you are, yeah, itchy well, there. Well, I mean, you know, I, I noticed your shirt, Funka, so I assume you're very, very excited for this upcoming match. How excited are you for Innovation versus Teja? Uh, I think that you can't get that much better of a TVT right now. Like, Teja has always been really, really good in TVT, and Innovation might be the best Terran, maybe with Maru right now. So I hope we're gonna see two Rax proxies. I don't know, well, we can, we can hope that works against uh, Innovation, you know? Okay, um, 
when you look at the, the whole tournament itself, the 16 players that are here, the quality is just unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, the, just the depth of talent across the board. Everything is perfect. I mean, like, the players are great, the production is really good. I think I'm doing a good, a good job right now, so I hope everybody likes it. I mean, you know. I, I think we got our answer on that one. Um, you are doing a very good job, sir. You always do do a good job. And um, it, it, tell me about the Observer role, because we don't really get to hear too much about it. How, how difficult it, is it to be an Observer and keep up with everything that's going on? Well, it, it is at the same time not difficult and difficult a little bit. I mean, you need to know a little bit about the game. You need to be really focused. Uh, the minimap is your best friend because everything is going on so fast with these kind of players. So yeah, just be focused, frame a little bit, do some zooming stuff because that's pretty cool. And afterwards, you know, just, just have fun with the game because you're the first viewer of the game. And if you like the game and you like the way you're showing it, like people are going to enjoy it too. Yeah, that's a good point. It, it seems all the best observers in the world, Chobra, are the ones that love the game. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, I, you know, the observers I've met too, they're always asking about the game, they're talking to the casters, and I want to ask, how much does it help to know specific players so that you know, so that you kind of have to be like a caster, you have to predict what they're going to do and know where, what to look out for so you're not caught off guard. How important is that for you? Well, it is important, and it, I, I think that more than knowing the players, it's important to know the casters here because they have some patterns, they want to see this thing, then another thing, and you know, if you do it in a proper way, well, you know, everybody is happy and the game is even better, so. So, a good observer, and I won't ex reveal who he was, once told me that the best observers in the world are the ones where nobody remembers that there's an observer, is that true? I didn't get what you said. So, I, I, an observer, a very famous observer, once told me that the best observers are the ones that no one remembers from the games, is that true? If you're doing your job really well, no one yeah. should care, right? Yeah, yeah, now I get it. Yeah, yeah, it's actually true, it's actually true. But I do know, I do I do, do like that people know a little bit about the, ga the guy who's doing the work, but yeah, if you don't want to scream at me and throw me stuff, is that I'm doing a great job, so. Right, well, we're not gonna throw anything at you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Funka. Thank you very much. Uh, stay there, don't go anywhere, you're locked onto the stage. Uh, we have had a little bit of a technical issue with one of the PCs, which is why we've been giving you a little bit more content. Uh, we can now go over to the commentary team again. So once more, it's Rotterdam and Artosis. Thank you so much, guys. Of course, Funka doing a great job so far. Definitely top three foreign observers in my eyes. No, I definitely think so. I might be an he's, he's putting out the open challenge to Adebisi. He's like, hey, Give me that observer that showdown. Adebisi better <laughs> watch out, man. There's people coming for him right now. He's going to have to go to Korea and practice, actually. <laughs> He's going to have to train observing in Korea what under the GOM observers. That's a great... Yeah, maybe Legend can start his own team house in Korea and train an army of observers. Well, you know, that's, that's where it becomes very difficult, just like the foreign pro gamers have a hard time. Like, how long do I spend staying there and training yeah. versus going out and doing events? Yeah, maybe it's not fair. Some observers travel around all the time, and they get more actual practice than the guys mm. in the team house. That's, it's, yeah, really it's, it's true, it's true, but let's talk a little bit more about this group because it's not just Innovation and Tasia. The no. winner is going to have to play a very good Protoss, and of course that's going to be between Nanawa and uh, Duck Duck to see who goes up. Of course, Duck Duck winning WCS Europe, and Nanawa, you know, he made it through, didn't do as well as he would like, and even was saying he didn't like his PvP that much. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that match? Who's actually going to take it? I think it's a really hard one to call. Uh, last time, Doc Doc won 3 to 1, if I'm not mistaken. But I felt that Nanima played unnecessarily risky against a very aggressive player. While in my opinion, if Nanima is able to survive to a certain phase in the game in PvP, he is really good at it, just like he's in any other matchup. So I think Nanima has definitely learned from that series. I think we're going to see a more safe Nanima. And I'm pretty damn excited and hmm. curious to see who's going to figure that one out. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I'm kind of torn on it because, uh, you know, you and I were talking a bit before about Duck Duck and his play style in that PvP, and he is very aggressive and very sharp and very good at executing it, but mm -hmm. it seems a little bit one-dimensional. So I could see either player coming up, but, I mean, Tasia and Innovation are players that I normally would expect to beat just about any Protoss. Yes, uh, I think this is a very rough group for both of those guys, but hey, we have the WCS Europe Champion and arguably or the best or second best foreigner in the world. Mm. So if there is an upset possible, 
you know, these guys might be able to do it, but yeah, it's Teja and innovation after all. The only good thing you can say is that Teja and innovation are playing each other first. Yes. And that's that, always a little tricky with this system. Yeah, that's, that does make it so that at least one of these guys is going to have that really hard route trying to get out twice. Yeah. But you know, I think probably if you are one of the two Protosses yep. and you win your group, who are you hoping wins out of innovation and Teja? Who would you rather play against? I, I think I would hope that Teja wins, so I don't have to play Innovation in TVP, but uh, it's not like it's a pleasure playing against Teja in, <laughs> in PVT, because he's so extremely good at this as well. And I think it's very hard to find people who play PVT on that level in the foreign scene. We saw that with Grubby against Bomber. I think that Grubby played really quite solid for quite yeah. a while. And then in a phase where, you know, if you would against a foreign there, normally you would say like, hey, I feel pretty comfortable right now. I think I've been doing really good so far. Suddenly you take, Similar, not even a big bad fight, but you just lose a few units and mm. it's almost impossible to come back. And I think that it's just so unforgivable to, or unforgiven to make one or two slip ups that it's going to be hard regardless, whether it's stage up, whether it's innovation, but yeah. you know, it's a great challenge to see where those guys stand as well. Mm. Now, let's talk about the actual TVT matchup for just a moment, because this is something that's going to factor in a lot here, I think. Mech is pretty good TVT, okay? It's getting more popular. <laughs> Teja doesn't is like it? to do it. Right? He's, he's a marine tank guy, yep. am I right? Yeah, and uh, Innovation, on the other hand, I see him kind of switched up. I feel like he'd rather go marine tank, mm -hmm. but he can go mech with the best of them. I Is this going to impact the match at all, do you think? Uh, I think that if Innovation finds a Terran who wants to go marine tank against him, I, can, I think he's just kind of like, you know, bring it on, because I like to do this too. I know that I'm really confident yeah. in my macro skills. I am extremely fast. I mean, the series that he played back then against Flash at MLG, that was just like, oh my god, is this how TVT is going to be in Heart of the Swarm? <laughs> it's just amazing. You see these speed meta vex fly all over the place, yeah, and yeah. it's purely almost a, you know, a mechanical thing. Like, how fast are you? Are you able to keep up with your opponent? And I think if he sees that it's going to be Marine Tank, I think Innovation is going to be completely okay with that. Yeah. Uh, maybe on a smaller map, he might try to out, to, uh, try to bust out Mac ones, but I, I think on the big maps, the big wide open maps, he's just like, all right, let's Marine Tank it up. I think that you pretty much nailed it on the head. That's what I'm thinking too. It's kind of like a gentleman's agreement. They yeah. both really like to macro with Marines, but you said, you know, a lot of that comes down to the speed of the player. And this is where I get afraid for Teja, because yes, he's very fast. He's great at multitasking, but Innovation without question is the best in the world at that. It's if it is Marine Tank versus Marine Tank and no damage is done early, does Teja actually have what it takes to beat Innovation? Uh, it's going to be a question mark, but it's also going to be something that's very fun to see. Because, uh -huh. as you mentioned before, Teja is not just that Korean Terran that they send around the world and suddenly win some foreign tournaments, but, you know, how well would he do in Korea? Teja was so consistent in Code S. I think there was yeah. four or even five seasons on a row. Yeah. He made it into top eight. Like, that's crazy that almost no one ever achieved that in the GSL Code S history, even before it turned into WCS. So Teja has proven time and time again that he has what it takes to play with the absolute best. He has never won a GSL, but hey, neither did Innovation, so. No, that is true. <laughs> Innovation hasn't won a GSL yet. Uh, I'm sure there's about three or four waiting for him in the next couple years, but yeah. uh, that's because basically everyone agrees this guy is the best in the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I think we still have a little bit of technical difficulty, so we're going to have to keep talking about these guys a little bit more. But no, it turns out that we are ready. Oh, wonderful. That's, <laughs> that's fantastic, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, any any more remarks about the players in the group, Rotterdam? No, I'm excited to see how it's going to be. I think it's going to be a great best of three. So I think we're just going to go ahead and introduce the players, and after that we're going to figure out what the map vetoes are. So guys, stay tuned and don't go anywhere. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, we are ready to rock and rumble in our Group C matchup. It's time to introduce you to the players. So excited to get into this match, Red Eye, and of course, we're going to kick things off with the first player in this match. It's going to be none other than the person who came back to WCS Season 2 Finals to defend his title as WCS Global Champion from Season 1. It's going to be from STX Soul, Innovation. Going up against the defending Season 1 champion is a man who is no stranger to championships himself, particularly in the summer. Please welcome Liquid Tasia! It's a dream. 
dream matchup from Group C, the Group of Death, as they call it. It's time to get a game on. Let's go over to our commentary team for this one. Rotterdam and Artosis. It's uh, it's pretty crazy. We just saw Apollo fangirl out when uh, Innovation came down on the stage. He's, you know, if if you spend your entire life, all your all your time every day studying StarCraft, you look at him and you're like, I'm surprised he did not float down the stairs. <laughs> I have no idea what I can respond to that, but <laughs> I know the feeling a little bit. I had it this morning when I saw Rain for the first time. I was just mm. like, wow, I've watched so many of your games. And, you know, I didn't want to bother him, of course, but eventually I was like, this weekend I'm just going to fanboy all out. No shame. I'm going to ask for pictures, no. which I haven't done in a long time. Normally it's like the casual picture here and there. Like, ah, it's cool for the memories. No, this time I just no. want to be a straight-up fan. And be you like, you are, like, the biggest Rain fan, I, I think. Because I love Rain, but all <laughs> I see you do is talk about him. You, you know what you should do is... Let him autograph your chest and get a tattoo over it. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not sure if I'm in the sta right state of mind to do that right now. <laughs> Maybe on a Sunday night then. Okay. <laughs> we'll see about that. Well, we're going to do the map vetoes in just a moment here. What type of things do you think they're going to look for in vetoing maps in this mirror matchup? I think the maps where it's extremely hard to keep track on where the meta vex go, because I think TVT has gone like full 360 degrees many times already in Hots. Yeah. Like, this, suddenly this is the standard and that's the standard. Keep switching it up. And now I feel that we're almost at the point where it's just like, hey, we're going to marine tank it up and <laughs> you're going to have to be fast. And you should see meta vex flying all over the place. So I think that you might see players where, you know, on this map I feel like I have that one second advantage because I always scout properly or I'm able to have an SCV on patrol <laughs> there. I see the meta vex flying in because I think it's safe to say the moment that four manifacts full of units fly into your main base and unload, you're, it's almost impossible to engage that. Once it's in your base, certainly if there's a tank or two in it as well, something we saw multiple times, uh, it is hard. And I no. think it's just a personal preference thing. Yeah, I, I think I have to agree with you. Maybe stylistically speaking, this map might be better for your opponent. Like, I'm pretty sure that Whirlwind, uh, I guess that was an innovation one because the X is on his side. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting there. Maybe because it's a bigger map, maybe he wants to utilize mech or tanks more against Tasia. I must say, like, uh, out of these maps, I would say Newkirk and perhaps even Aklan to some degree are reasonable mech, uh, mech maps. Yeah, I, in fact, Aklan is one of my favorite mech yeah. maps. That's the map that last season MVP had that comeback game after going down to <laughs> nine SCVs and beat Innovation's bio. So That, that was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I'm very looking forward to seeing what types of strategies they're actually going to use on that map in particular. And uh, last time I saw Innovation play on, on Newkirk, I'm pretty sure he went mech as well. So... I mean, there is a lot of airspace around the main bases from Neil Kirk, so you could say, like, that's hey, that's true, pretty yeah. good to drop. But it's also quite easy to at least split up the map, and if you get a couple of turrets, and with a couple, I mean way too many. <laughs> way too many. But you can afford it, so it's okay, because yeah. mules get a lot of minerals. Then, with mech, and if your mech my army marches across the map, it can be so difficult for a bio army to properly engage that. That is very true. You know, when you can cut up a map, it's all about the cost efficiency, the range of the units, pushing slowly across, but... You know what? Uh, Tasia, as far as I'm concerned, might have the best bio versus mech I've ever seen. Yeah. He's really good at it. He knows exactly how to pick it apart, how to move around it. Even on maps such as Daybreak, I've seen him break some of the best mech players in the world. Here we can see... Uh, actually, oh, he did drop one map against Max Z. I forgot about that. Uh -huh. It was a ridiculous game on Neo Planet S. That was a great match. But other than that, Tejan had a fantastic run throughout uh, the entire second season of WCS America. Uh, pretty much only struggling with Bolt, being able to defeat him in the round of 32. But then eventually he met him again mm -hmm. in the semi-final. But he played a fantastic season, and it's great to have him here. He certainly did. That lineup of players he went through, yeah. those are not pushovers. Some of you guys may not recognize the names, but a lot of the top Chinese players are yeah. Listed there, and that's that's scary. They're very good. Ooh. And then, of course, we have innovation over here, and you can see that. Well, he was looking pretty good for a little bit, and then Bomber took him out. That match wasn't really no. meaningful. They exactly. were already both qualified for the next round. Yep. But 3-0ing Solky in one of the best series I've ever seen Solky play. Just once reaffirmed, we're like, okay, he's probably still going to win the whole tournament. Hit Maru. Maru played some really great TV innovation. <laughs> no better way to put it. No. Uh, that, was, that was just a bizarre day. It was one of the most bizarre days of StarCraft I've ever seen. I remember waking up and I scrolled through the Reddit post and it was just like, 4-0 Maru, yeah, okay. And then I went over and was like, what is no, <laughs> This is not possible. You and mean he was 4-0, right? <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, this is, that's one of Maru's great strengths, I guess. He did it against Rain as well, where he just kind of comes in with the right strategies, the right game plan. And, 
ends up winning there. But yeah, we're going to see him later today in action as well. Of course, we're going to show you guys a little bit of every single group. There's going to be uh, Group D action after this. We already went to Group A and B. Of course, one match is remaining. That's what we're going to open up with tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we're, uh, it's going to be fireworks right off the bat. We're going to know who's going to be our final eight. And, you know, there's a lot on the line every single game tomorrow. Yeah, that's, it, it's all elimination tomorrow. Yep. You know, like this match, not elimination. Yep. One of these guys might get eliminated in the match after this, but then again, we might see both these guys play again. Yep. No. I, I like the setup actually a lot. I think it's something yeah. really cool. Like in the old days, it's kind of like, that sounds so stupid. I want to know who advanced. But now it's like, okay, you know, so today we at least know one player who's for sure eliminated. We know one player who for sure advances. We, we have to leave a teaser yeah. at the end to make sure everyone tunes in tomorrow. Well, I don't think anyone actually watches, watches the first day of the tournament. They're like, all right, I'm good. <laughs> it's like, no, you're going to tune in later anyways. But uh, it definitely leaves a lot of good games there. So the first time. map, as we got invited to the game lobby already, so the players are finally ready. We're sorry for the small hold-up, but I don't think it was too bad. It was a lot of fun, and mm -hmm. eventually we went through it all. Yeah, we uh, talked about everything there is to talk about, basically. <laughs> few things were off limits, but you know, that's <laughs> part of life. The beautiful trophy standing there in the middle as well. The first map is going to be Star Station, which I think is safe to say, if there's one good bio map, it had to be Star Station. Yeah, this, the third base, just way too wide open when... You very rarely see anybody go mech on this map. It's just not made for it. So the countdown has begun. We're going to be in that game in just a second here. Oh, God, I'm getting really excited, Rotterdam. You got the nerd chills oh already, Oh, my then. God, I'm getting wiggly and jiggly. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's innovation against Tasia. And we have down here in the bottom right, many think he's the best player in the world. Make some noise for innovation. And his opponent up in the top left, definitely a fan favorite indeed. Make some noise for Liquid Tasia. I think it's safe to say that both of these guys are absolute fan favorites and they deserve it. They've won so much already and they've shown us so much great StarCraft. Not just over the last six months, but I think it's safe to say for a very long time. And I'm kind of happy that, that not both of them are using barcodes because that would have been very confusing. <laughs> I was <laughs> just like, been. barcode, who is it? And yeah. Unfortunately, we do have the big overlayer at the top right now. So for well, a second, I was like, Ugh. I'm not going to have any idea who's doing it. <laughs> well, uh, you know what? This. I'm pretty excited, man. Imagine for a moment, if you would, what if Innovation wins this season? If he wins this season, that's two season championships. He's going to have so many WCS points. Yeah. Like, it's just going to be silly. He's going to be like three times above the second place yeah, I, guy. I know. It's going to be absolutely insane. He can literally retire to BlizzCon and still show up yeah. at BlizzCon and then win BlizzCon. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true. Do you get WCS points for winning BlizzCon? I wouldn't think so. I think you have to start fresh each season, but, I, you know, with the amount of money and prestige and trophy at BlizzCon, I don't think you're really going to mind. No, I don't need it. Both players open up very similar so far, throwing down the refinery at the identical timings. Um, doesn't seem like it's going to be straight up Reaper opening. I actually expected at least a Reaper opening from one of these players, mm. as I think Reaper is quite okay on Star Station. There's so much surface area to jump in and out the base. Certainly there is, uh, but it looks like they're both going to play it pretty safe overall. I do like Reaper openings as far as safeness goes, but you do have to be careful against some openers there. And, you know, the one thing I do know about Tasia, he does like Banshee openers. Yep. Yeah, I think we saw that multiple times in his series against Paul. Of course, Cloak Banshees or no Cloak Banshees, either way works pretty damn good. Uh, it became a lot better these days. Cloak, of course, became a little bit more or uh, a little less cheap or quite a bit, actually. Went from 200 to 100 gas not yeah. too long ago. It kind of changed the landscape of TVT once more because it took a while. You know, for a while we didn't see too many Banshees. It felt like an overinvestment. It was hard to make it pay for itself. But right now, even if you just kill a few SUVs and you force a few scans, all right, my cloak research page for itself. Yeah, and it's kind of a useful thing to have anyways. You know, you never know when it's going to go so late game that you both end up with 
like a lot of Siege Shanks and kind of switching into Sky Terran. And at that point, it's, you're going to be using Banshees again. No, oh, I've seen so many DVDs. That was certainly one of the most popular things in Wings of Liberty. It's like, all right, we're both having a crazy amount of tanks. Let's suddenly squeeze out four cloak Banshees. <laughs> yeah. like, it's like, no, I'm losing all my tanks. We can see that um, Teja decided to drop his command center on the low ground while Innovation decided to build in his main base. So, you know, small economic advantage for Teja as he's going to be able to saturate that base a little bit quicker than his opponent. Yeah, and you know what, Rotterdam? I thought that I wasn't going to see any Zerg versus Zerg matches this weekend, but by watching this production tab, I feel like it is that because everything's lined up 100% <laughs> exactly for both players. So far it is, but I don't think it's going to continue like that for too long. As Well, so far, the star points are going down at the exact same moment, but yeah. after this, of course, well, two heavy ends as well. You were, you were a little bit wrong there. It's still exactly the same on that production tab. And, uh, you know, until something there changes or we see someone move across the map, that's, that's about it. I mean, these guys are basically tied exactly right now. Maybe the tiniest lead for, in, for uh, Tasia because he did that command center on the low ground, but so small it's not really worth mentioning. Uh, Tasia did go for a small scout as well. At least he made that Marine march across the map, while Innovation on the other hand has seen absolutely nothing yet. So these Hellions that he's going to send out, that is going to be his first scout. Mm. Once more, big shout out to Show. As Show already said that this was the best way to play it. <laughs> Wings of Liberty Beta. Well, that's, that is true. I will give him credit for that all day, every day. Uh, we do have a scan coming down, though, so he knows pretty much that it's a mirror build coming out, which means, you know what you want? Ooh, this is a really good engagement right now for innovation. And uh, that, that's painful for Tasia. Losing a Hellion and another one taking a lot of damage when you're going for the exact same units. That means you're giving up a lot of map control. And also yeah. they squeezed out a medevac pretty early on, so both players want to do the exact same thing. But yeah, it sucks. Losing one Hellion, taking a lot of damage in the other one. Are you going to repair it? I guess he is, as you can see. But that also slows him down a little bit. So from this point on, you could say, all right, Innovation is probably going to be aggressive. And while I say that, he queues up a Banshee. So maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just wants to defend from this hmm. point on. Well, with a Raven on the way, do you think there's any chance here that Innovation's actually going to go with Mech? I mean, he's he's got a lot of Hellions. He hasn't added any barracks yet. We already have Stim going for Tasia. I'm starting to feel that he might Mech here. Mm, I think you might be onto something, but it would really surprise me. Uh, we're going to get an answer on that question within one minute from this point on, I guess. But yeah, Stim already being researched for Tasia, mm. and everything was so similar early on. You can only imagine that if uh, Innovation did want to go for Bio as well, that that would have probably been pretty damn similar by now as well. Yeah, they'd be probably in the same spot, but as is, look at this, he's getting a Viking as well, continuing making Hellions. Rotterdam, I tell you, I think we're actually going to see Mech against Bio here, and what this says to me personally is, Maybe. if Tasia does not win here, 2-0, oh. because this is the map that we decided on, you know, this is not the best for Mech. This is one where a bio player like Tasia, one of the best bio players in the world, should be able to break you. There's still no additional factories or anything going down for innovation, though. This is going to be a pretty nasty little push. Certainly if he hits, somehow hits before Stim is ready. Stim right now is 70 seconds away from completion. Uh, it's going to be quite annoying facing this overwhelming amount of Hellions, as there are 14 Hellions for innovation on the map against only 5 Hellions for Tasia. And sure, there are 11 Marines, but we all know what Hellions can possibly do to Marines. Yeah, that's, they definitely can fry them, but there are some Marauders starting to come out, and Marauders do a great job against those Hellions, but in these numbers, definitely I, I have to give the edge there to Innovation, who, by the way, that's with right. his third command center almost done, he's started a couple more factories. So we are going to see a mech right now. These first Hellions are going to engage a couple of these units. So far, pretty reasonable engagement for Innovation. Yeah, he's doing a good job, kiting back and forth in between shots. Moving forward now, wow. starting to pick off more of these Hellions, and look at that. We have a couple auto turrets going down. Some great moves here by Innovation. Oh my god, this is actually a ridiculous amount of damage right now. There are barely any units left for Teja. He has a few Marauders, and yes, Marauders can soak up a lot of damage, but he's going to lose so many SVs. Way too much here for him, that's for sure. He's even going to land his Vikings to help deal some more damage as well. The SCV's coming out, but there's still so many Hellions. I don't know if this is a good idea for Tasia. Oh my god, Tasia just has no units anymore. All of the Marines died so quickly. The Hellions were kind of trapped on the ramp. He's forced to pull SCVs once more, but he's losing so many of them. Wow. Well, that's, I mean, this is... 
The game isn't over yet, but is the game over, Rotterdam? <laughs> no, it's hard to call it early against a player like Tasia, but so much damage has been dealt. 20 SCVs oh, are down. Man. The third command center is up and running. There are still SCVs dying in both the main and in the natural. Uh, what a crazy push by Innovation. That was, a, what a cool build this yeah. was, actually. Like, you know, to actually just sit there on one factory, one yeah. starport, one barracks, get all that while making a third command center, moving out, and then just killing someone who's making Marauder Marine with some Hellions? That's, it's madness. That was a really cool build. Yeah. I think the combat shield got cancelled as well, or maybe uh, that actually did finish. Oh, I guess it did finish. He focused the Tagla for a while, but he didn't uh, focus it down. Either way, great push by Innovation. He has the production behind this as well to survive any sort of counter push. Uh, he slowed Tasia down so much that right now he doesn't have to march across the map. He doesn't have to take any risk. He can macro up a little bit, get a few more factories. He's up to three right now. He's getting two more. So with five factories, the production is going to be really good. And then some moment he hit 160, 170 supply. Mm. He can leave enough units at home to not take crazy damage from drops and still have enough units marching across the map to literally kill Tasia. Yeah, you're, you're completely right there. And, you know, the one thing I always look for with mech is can you trade ever minerals for minerals? Because it, mech is so limited by gas, and bio is so mineral heavy to make so many marines and so many marauders with that low gas cost. And here we see he's done that in spades. He's in such a great spot where Tasia's economy is behind, his production is behind, he lost more units. This is, it's such a wonderful position here for innovation. All he has to do is exactly what you said, Rotterdam, macro up to at least around 170, and he's gonna be fine. Hey, you know, like playing against Mac is, in my opinion, always tricky, no matter if you're Protoss or Terran. Uh, some Protoss find it easy, but above all, against Mac, uh, there's one rule. You can never actually lose a fight, because the moment you lose a fight against Mac mm -hmm. and you're not playing Mac yourself, you're gonna have a really rough time, because how are you ever gonna trade efficiently against a super, an army with such a strong knockout potential, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And right now, Teja already lost the fight before the fight even begun. We see a little bit of a helmet drop as well. He's gonna lose a few more SCVs. Uh, it, it's just going to be so hard for him to muster out the right amount of buy units yeah. to ever even be able to pick up units in the first place. Okay, and more SCVs being killed, the lost mining time, it's, it's absolutely amazing. That was eight more SCVs right there. This is, you know, Innovation was saying before about, you know, how it, when the Hellbat nerf came, he got nerfed yeah. and he wasn't as good because he was so focused on that type of strategy. But here he's shown us an alternative opening while he gets enough time to get the blue flame out, to get the medevacs out, and to start dropping hellbats again. And it's still pretty damn it's good. It's pretty damn good, Rotterdam. I love this as well. He's getting a lot of turrets. Once more, innovation this is just going to macro up a little bit. He doesn't want to find himself in this position where he was doing so good, he was quite far ahead, but suddenly he's forced into a weird kind of base trade and eventually somehow ends up losing, which is very unlikely. He's playing this very safe and very correct. He's up 36 or 26 Six workers. He killed 29 workers mm. throughout the entire game. There's no need for him to take any risk. Certainly there is not. And Tasia right now, you know, he's trying to be active on the map. Doesn't really have the army necessary for it from all the damage he's taken. But what I really like is he's adding a second factory. He realizes that the key to victory here isn't going to be bio catching siege tanks out of position. It's going to be utilizing siege tanks with that bio to make an area that's impenetrable to to innovation. Even when you're not the mech player in TBT, you can still have a certain amount of tanks to put yourself up in a very strong defensive position. And we all know that engaging in mech versus mech is very hard. And even when the other guy doesn't nearly have as much tanks as you do, if there are six, seven, eight, nine siege tanks there, it's going to be still damn hard to march in. Sure, Hellbats are very beefy and they soak up a lot of damage, but there's only so much damage they can take as well. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of crazy like that. The defender's advantage in Terran versus Terran, probably the biggest yeah. in the entire game. So Totally agree. It's it's a really smart move from Tasia to try to come back. And look, his supply's looking pretty yeah. decent. 170 against 191. He, he is starting to fight his way back into this game. Yep, he's actually missing this army right now from Innovation. Teja on the right side. This is actually kind of awkward. Maybe he can get a really good siege, but I don't think that this is a fight he really wants oh, to take. Oh no, the Hellbats being dropped all over the army. The point defense drones helping out as well. The Hellbats marching forward and GG. Wow. Innovation 
crushing to victory through Tasia. Just when it was starting to look a little brighter for Tasia, I think yeah. he got a little over eager already. He's like, hey, actually, I, my army's pretty big right now. Maybe I can make something happen. Maybe I can force you to stay on three bases for a while. Uh, but that was the wrong decision. He was not yet in the state that he can actually move out because he really needed to stay defensive for a little longer. And sure, it would have been an uphill battle regardless, but this was not a moment where he was able to take the fight. You're completely right. You know, maybe if innovation hadn't been moving out that moment, maybe yeah. Tasia's move would have worked out. And as you said, he kind of missed the army a little bit there for a moment. But when they met each other, man, yeah. it was kind of brutal. Uh, innovation playing fantastically. I don't know about you. I haven't seen that specific build that he used in the opener. I haven't seen it either. So I think I think that innovation after losing tomorrow, he's like, something's going to change. I got to yeah. figure out a build. I got to figure out a strategy here that fits into the way I play. I think it's. And I, I think th we just saw it. I think that was a great build, but I don't think it's a build that you want to do two or even three times on a row mm. because he does slow everything else down for a very long time. He stays on that one factory, one yeah. racks, one starboard for a crazy amount of time. He even goes up to three bases, but just still yeah. being on only those three production buildings. His, yeah, his production is so small, but I think what he's trying to do is have complete map control for a certain amount of time. And is that something that if he does it again, Teja can now identify and play against? You know, like either make a little bit of a wall and make a single bunker, that would have made the, all the difference in the entire difference. world. Uh, and then maybe move out right after that in the weak moments when innovation doesn't have the siege tank count that he needs to hold that third base. Uh, I think it was pretty clear to say that like he was just caught off guard. The Hellions were kind of trapped on the ramp. He took a lot of unnecessary shots there. Yeah, yeah. And all of his Marines were so exposed that half of them died before they were even able to take out any damage. Yeah. Uh, really cool build by innovation though and I can't wait to see what he has in store for us in game number two. Well, we will see. It's loading up now. The map is Akalon Wastes. And Akalon Wastes I, yeah. I like this map for mech quite a bit, Rotterdam. I, I mean, I like every map for it, but <laughs> we know you especially Akalon Waste. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to mech on Star Station, there's almost no reason for you not to mech on Akalon Waste. <laughs> exactly, Waze. right? That, I think it, he showed his plans there for us. Well, here we go, guys. It's Innovation against Asia. And down here in the bottom right, he crushed his opponent in game one. Make some noise for Innovation. And up in the top left, he needs to win here. He's going to fight a very fearsome Protoss in that loser's match. Make some noise for Liquid Tasia. And boy, oh boy, Dan, am I curious to figure out what is going to happen in this map. I think it's safe to say that Tasia is going to scout a little bit more because he was just, I don't think, he, I, he saw the amount of Hellions, he's like, all right, I might have to defend some Hellions in my main, I might have to keep some units in my natural, because you made a few more Hellions than you would normally do. Yeah. But then suddenly, instead of thinking there's like eight to 10 Hellions, there was like 14 Hellions. Yeah. And then they all run into his natural, and it's like, okay, the moment you have to react to something like that, it's already too late. And it was pretty <laughs> much game over from that moment. That's, it's well said, Rotterdam. You know, that definitely caught him off guard. If, you know, if you and I haven't seen it, there's a chance that he hasn't seen it as well. So. Uh, I don't think, I think as you said, I, he shouldn't do that again though, that exact same build. If he does, and it just straight up kills uh, Tasia again, then I think, <laughs> you know, Tasia's made a mistake here. Yes, or we just have no idea what we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, that <laughs> definitely could be the case as well. <laughs> this time we can see that both players actually going to scout, and the previous map Innovation did not scout. Uh, this time he is though, but he's not going to be able to see all that much, but what he will see is that it's not going to be a Reaper, but a Marine, and that's something, you know. Yeah, he's, he's getting at least some information here. And, uh, I think he's actually trying to make sure, okay, there you go. He sees that Marine and sees when it pops out. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, no real scouting from Teja either. Neither player being able to really get in and see exactly when the gas timings are. Well, interesting though, uh, as you mentioned, yes, neither player did, was able to see when the gas timings are, but Innovation is going to follow this up with a Reaper. So it's Marine into Reaper instead of the other way around. And that Reaper is guaranteed to have a great scout up, as Mr. Mm -hmm. Bitter would say, and he's been saying for three years straight. And he might be able to do some bonus damage as well. Yeah, he definitely <laughs> could. You know, we actually do have that reactor coming up, so it's going to stifle Marine production yeah. for a while. <laughs> but I wonder now, Innovation obviously already changing his build quite a bit. Yep. 
What do you like personally, Roger Dame? You open up with the Reaper Scout. You know you're playing against Tasia, a player that really prefers to go Biotank. Do you think he might go for Biotank himself this time? Or? Yeah, I, I think so, because I think their uh, mech ID behind his previous threat was a lot with, let's see how much damage these original Hellions can do. Mm. Of course, he was already committed to the heck, uh, mech build, while this Reaper jumps in and picks up this SV. I think it has a lot to do with the fact how he opened, and I think this time it's more likely we're going to see him play Bio. I think it Man. is as well, and that's that's a good Reaper so far. That's a really good Reaper. He got that guaranteed scout off, and he also did a little bit of bonus damage. Picked off two SUVs and slowed down this command center. Uh, that Reaper was worth its weight in gold, and even though he doesn't weight very much, still, you know, you know I, it's I, a lot of gold. I, I hear some casters say Reaper Expand is the best build, but, <laughs> you know, here it, it's looking like it because he's gotten such a great job here, delaying that command center, killing two SCVs. That alone is worth the Reaper, plus the scouting, seeing exactly when that factory's going up. And uh, everything delaying. for Tage is a bit slow, it feels. Yep, this time he will be able to usher that Reaper out, so the Reaper is not going to be able to jump into the main base once more and completely identify the timing of the starports in the factory, but uh, nothing to worry about. That Reaper did his job and did it more than well. Yeah, very well indeed. And you know, it looks like Tasia is going to go back to something he's a little bit more comfortable with as well. It looks like he's going to go for that Banshee opener here. Yep, we see Bovary, he's mining uh, gas already from Bov refineries. And we see something bizarre from Innovation this time. There are two Widow Mines in production already. Now, yeah. if it's just the two Widow Mines, maybe it's not that bizarre. If it's going to be more than two, I cannot wait to see what he has in store mm. for us. Could it be, like, let's say, a Widow Mine drop into Cloaked Banshee? He does have that add-on right now. Uh, that tech lab on the barracks. We'll wow. see if he starts anything there, or maybe he's going to switch it up. And that, I felt, was a very unfortunate scan, because if you see this, you say, like, hey, that's the same thing you did last time. But it's not. Uh -huh. It's, it's yeah. so different. No, it, it truly is. And in fact, look at this. Let's see. Is this going to be a Banshee? Oh, a Raven again? Okay. I, I do want to see what he's going to end up doing with those Widow Mines. Yeah, well, they're right now just in front. Perhaps he's worried about some sort of a crazy push by Teja. Hmm. He's like, hey, maybe you like my build in game number one so much that you're going to use it in game two <laughs> against me. And I would hate to die against it, so I'm going to get two defensive Widow Mines. Of course, there are so many mind games, and it's really hard to read exactly what your opponent is doing. There are so many viable options right now to open up in TVT. But at the end of the day, most of the time it comes down to Marine Tank, but Innovation is actually yeah. once more showing us more and more signs of leaning towards mech play. And you know what, Rotterdam, we were talking before and it looked like Tasia was maybe going to go into a Banshee play, but this is actually Marine Tank Medevac. And this is something that, like, against what he played against last game, I, I would put this as the favorite build for sure. Definitely. Uh, we don't, oh, the Medevac would have to be so careful. I don't think he would expect Widow Mines in this phase no. of the game. <laughs> you would not expect two <laughs> Widow Mines right there right now. That is a fact. Well, right now we do have that third command center coming up for innovation. Whereas it's just production facilities and units coming out for Tasia. So it looks like he's going to have to be the first one to really do a push here. Yep, he's going to have to make something happen eventually, unless he just wants to freely let him go up to three bases and mech it up. But that's something that's really quite scary to do. Uh, these Widow Mines, they serve their purpose in at least giving Innovation a peaceful state of mind. So mm -hmm. right now he's maybe going to take his own Aguat Tower or just put it in the base where there would eventually be a third command. And just small things to delay something much later in the game and just be a little bit annoying. Yeah. Oh, or snipe a medevac like that. That's oh, actually that's pretty cute. sick. I love these little moves uh, that we're seeing from Innovation here. You know, just changing his build in the smallest little ways. And But t you know what, Tasia? He hasn't taken any damage in this early game. And that's really what the story of last game was. We said, you know, a couple times, yeah, he got rolled, but, you know, it's not... Ooh, actually finds that and picks <laughs> off, but... You know, he, he got rolled because he took so much damage in the early game. Now this is, we're basically having a fair fight. But he is putting him in this position where he is, get, he is forced to do a lot of damage. The mm -hmm. first time he really moves out, the first time he really starts dropping, Teja is going to have to deal damage. Otherwise, he's going to be severely outmined by his opponent, who's already up five workers, who's already on triple orbital command, who's floating over that orbital already. Teja is moving out right now, and he's going to have to make something happen. You know, if anyone can make something happen in this situation, it is absolutely Teja. He has a lot of siege tanks right now. Uh, and in fact, he's got three siege tanks against currently none. It's going to be two in a second, but that's a big deal if the bio player has more tanks. I like this move actually a lot by Tasia right now because he has just a little bit more of everything and he has a crazy amount of DPS if he stims up this ramp right now. Oh my god, this, this could be very good from Blue Flame. is oh, just I barely not done yet. 
That's a really good position for him to siege. It's not a direct threat yet, but it's very annoying mm -hmm. for innovation. This is like, all right, how am I going to get units down my ramp? Uh, losing a medevac kind of sucks because that's pretty much all of the air vision that he has. Uh, oh, Seeker missiles Ooh, going down. Oh my god. Oh, I really like this move. You know, the point defense drone not going to be too useful here. So he uses Seeker missiles, and here we go. A stim in from Tasia. And we have those Hellions going forward, hitting the Marines. The SCV is all coming off the line. But Tasia looks like he's going to break him. Wow, Tasia did so much more damage here than I thought he would. He's going to be able to pick up that tank as well. And despite innovation pulling all these SCVs, Tasia survives with enough bio units and he still has his siege tanks alive as well. This is a great spot for Tasia. It's almost a reverse of what we saw in the first game where this huge push comes in. I don't think it's necessarily GG right this second, but wow. he's going to make that third lift. And when the third lifts, is there any chance for Innovation to come back here with those siege tanks up down his ramp? He's going to have him on lockdown. It's going to be so hard for Innovation to keep this third base safe as well. He's going to lose a few SVs there. During all this, Tasia did drop his third commands and then he's slowly but steady going to go up to a full three base economy by the Terran player. But he he doesn't have to do this though. I guess it's fine, but he doesn't have to. <laughs> yeah, he could actually just sit down there yeah. and there's no way to even come down the ramp. But uh, he decides, you know what, I want to end this now and get in the game number three and show you innovation that I can beat your mech with Biotank. A couple of helmets being dropped on top of these tanks. Cute micro though by Tasia picking his siege tank up. Innovation doing the exact same thing. We know what innovation can do with just a few a handful of helmets, but not even the craziest helmets in the world are going to turn this around. No, <laughs> they have to be pretty darn crazy indeed. <laughs> But he's going to keep on trying, dropping a couple more. One of those medevacs does get taken out, but more units coming in. GG! Liquid Tasia evening up the score, 1-1. One, one. Showing great game sense as well. He stayed on two bases for a long time. He put himself in a position where he was going to have to deal a lot of damage with his push. He didn't just deal a lot of damage. He straight up won the game. Yeah, that was, that was a really nice push. I, I like the style that he used there. When he saw that his opponent is kind of favoring a mech style that's very slow on the siege tanks, very heavy on the Hellions. You know, yes, Hellions are going to do well against Marines, but when you put in some siege tanks, when you put in uh, the stim and the spread of the Marines, as well as some medevacs, you're going to do all right against that. Yep. You get that siege up, and those Hellions are not breaking you. He found his uh, opponent a little bit out of position as, like, helmets were kind of running all over the place. And above all, the tanks were not sieged. Those tanks were not sieged within range of that ramp. So he was uh, freely uh, able to walk up that ramp. Then he was able to siege mm -hmm. up uh, himself in a pretty damn good position. And that's already awkward. When someone is sieging up at your ramp, it's just like, ah, uh, now I'm going to yeah. have to somehow be the player who is attacking while I should have defender's advantage. And suddenly, the roles are turned. Yeah you actually are the defender then yeah. you know or trying to be the defender up your own ramp it's it's a terrible spot because yep. they have the defender's advantage in the weird way that that works yeah, out it's like all right i'm attacking but i have defender's advantage yeah. like, that's unfair man that makes no <laughs> sense at all it makes no <laughs> sense at all but it's uh, kind of what happened uh, really nice moves there by tasia but i feel that that game is kind of also like what game was for one was for innovation where it's a build that's it's good it's going to get you a win but innovation is going to be in the lookout for that build again i don't think he's going to fall to that i think he's going to put in a little bit of scouting effort see like oh okay looks like you're getting your marines and siege shanks very early here yep. I'm going to get Siege Tanks quicker and hold this. Yeah, I don't think there's any way that he would have ever expected his opponent to push on that moment. It's just like, hey, I am the mecking player. You're not supposed to just yeah. run up my ramp. Like, you don't do that, man. No. We would have a gentleman's this agreement. This isn't 2010. We don't run up ramps against Siege Tanks now. What are you doing? But, you know, the Siege Tanks were so late. So our next map is Newkirk Precinct. And as you said uh, before Rotterdam, it's got a lot of airspace. But to be frank, we haven't really seen that many drops in either game so far. That's you think it's going to be different here? It depends a lot on how the game unfolds. I definitely think it's something that Teja would love to do. But if Innovation is just sitting on his two bases and he's already getting missile turrets up, he will just basically just throw away units. And that's mm. not what you want to do. There's no need for Teja to do this. But I am very curious, though, because if he is doing the same kind of style as he did in game two, where he puts himself in a position where, all right, my push is going to have to deal a lot of damage. Otherwise, I'm economically pretty far behind. Mm -hmm. How is he going to make that happen again? Uh, on Newkirk, it's it's pretty hard too. You know, there's a lot of choke points. There's a lot of ramps that you can be up depending on when you want, where you want to take your third base. I think that this is going to be one where you know the the mech style of innovation is going to be very strong as long as he has his siege tanks in time. Do you think it's possible that Tasia would mech it up as well? You know, Tasia 
has gone mech before, but it's very rare. I don't think he's very comfortable with it. I don't think he likes it that much. And again, he is one of these, these Terrans that can use that bio and break through the mech. So short answer is I don't think he's going to mech here. Nah. I think he's going to go ahead and just play his bio tank and see if he can get a victory. I would love to see both of these guys go marine tank, though. At least one game in this series, <laughs> but uh, I don't think it's going to happen anymore, but we're definitely going to see some marine tanks later this tournament as we got so many great Terran players, and this is just the first of most likely quite a many TV. No doubt, no doubt. Well, over here in the bottom right, lost that last game. Can he win this one? It is innovation. And in the bottom left, a great attack that last game, evening up the series. It is Liquid Tasia. I know that Reaper worked out really well for Innovation last game, even though he didn't end up winning on game, but of course it had nothing to do with that Reaper. That Marine into Reaper opening, that was more than worth it, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him do the same thing once hmm. more, as on Neo Kirk there is also a little bit of room to jump up and down the cliff. Yeah, Not yeah. too much, but, you know. You know, a Reaper opening is always at least okay on pretty much every map. You're going to be able to get in for at least one scout. Sometimes you'll hit that second scout, sometimes you'll kill an SCV. Kind of rarely you kill two, even though we did see that last game. But uh, it's it's pretty well worth it, especially if you feel like early game is where they might catch you off guard, where they might be able to do damage to you. If I think back about like terrible Reaper maps, I would only say that like Daybreak was the worst Reaper map ever. Yeah. <laughs> that's like... Yeah, no, that's you're not getting up there very often. <laughs> but other than against that... Protoss, you'll still get up twice, but not against Terran. No. Uh, we can see already the refinery down for Innovation. That's a lot quicker than in the previous games. He mm. dropped that gas super quick. Innovation, what are you going to do oh. with this? He might open up with like a cloaked banshee, you think? Or maybe some sort of drop? I'm feeling you. Maybe it's either going to be like four Hellions and a Medivac dropping or perhaps a cloaked banshee opening. Yeah. Because this is super quick gas. He's going to produce the Reaper once more. Does he have a Marine? Yet? No, it's a straight up Reaper opening this huh. time. All right, all right, we'll see how that goes. Now, uh, as far as Teja goes, he actually went 15 gas, which yep. normally means we're going to see a command center before the factory. But Teja sometimes likes to get that reactor before the command center as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's, he was saving up quite a bit of money already, I wanted to say. Um, we will see. No signs of the reactor yet. I actually think he's going to go straight factory. No, oh, he may. Uh, he may well indeed. And we actually have a second Reaper being made by Innovation here. Mm. Interesting. But do you really think it was worth, uh, was needed for him to get that gas that quick for those two Reapers? Hmm. You know, I don't particularly like two Reapers in a row against Terran like this out of one barracks. It feels like what... I guess what he's going to do is guarantee himself two scouts, but... Oh, that's good placement of those Marines by oh, Tasia. Oh, he has to be so careful. If he ends oh. up losing that Reaper, Ooh. that would be massive, but the Reaper will not fall. Uh, but still, this is already so nice with Tasia that Reaper is going to have to stay back for a little bit. Uh, I don't think that these two Reapers are going to be able to get all that much done. No, it doesn't look like it. Maybe jump one in on the other side, jump yeah. the other one in. I think he's just trying so hard to get into the main base one time with these. And I think they hope for uh, like a one Marine into reactor and being able to pick up that Marine immediately and then yeah. just be annoying. But yeah, that's, that's not true. going to happen as uh, Tasia opened up much more safely than that. Well, the Reaper's going to try to skirt around here. Tasia has a pretty good Marine spread, but it looks like they are going to get in. Oh, no, he's actually going to go after the Marines wow. for a bit. That's kind of surprised me. I thought it was just yeah. going to run by. Because also, it's very annoying for Marines to defend against Reapers when they're able to uh, jump up and down the cliffs mm. uh, at this little ramp. Innovation is going to be able to spot this command center here and identify the timing as well without losing a Reaper. So oh. that's good. Very good job so far here by uh, Innovation, <laughs> keeping them alive. He sees every building, the add-ons being made and everything. So. A uh, very good job. And in the meantime, you know, kind of a mirror over here. We do have that factory starting to produce the Hellions, as well as getting the starport. Uh, we can see Innovation dropped his second refinery, also a little bit quicker than Tasia. Uh, but he was he's not mining with six SCVs. He's actually only mining with four, which, you know, is kind of an uh, hmm. odd number. Yeah, Certainly especially it's when it's one and, one and three. You normally yeah. want two and two for a little bit more efficiency there, but... 
Uh, you know, it's innovation. He's busy doing a lot of things with his speed right now. In fact, look at this nice Reaper. That's going to get him some nice information. Yep, he's going to see that starboard with the tech lab, which is also important. This is a pretty big tell. And we can see the Banshee in production as well. That's actually the first Banshee that we see this series. Mm, this is really like the play that he was using a lot against Pult, actually, at, at WCSNA, where he's going to go into that Banshee. But is he going to actually end up getting Cloak? Uh, and yeah, he is. Look at that. But the Reaper saw it. That second uh, Reaper, I guess it paid <laughs> off really well. Innovation just thinks ahead seven minutes into the game. And he's like, eventually, I'm going to get a good scout off, but then I'm going to get the confirmation scout <laughs> off with my second Reaper. Because I'm innovation and I do that. Yeah, yeah, great, great job here. Look at those jukes. Man, that's a, that's a mobile player right there. He's juking left and right, that's jumped into the main once more. Run into the forest, you know, hide behind trees. Look at this, he's still damaging everything as well, which, you know, if he does end up doing a Hellion drop, that damage might end up doing something also. I like that Tasia canceled Cloak after mm. that second Reaper uh, scouted it. Uh, you know, it's still kind of annoying for Innovation because he has to worry about it, but he's also aware of the fact, like, hey, I scouted it, you might cancel it. Mm. Well, you know what? He's getting that Raven anyways, but we've seen that out of him a lot so far. Uh, is grabbing that third command star. And look at this. You know what? This is Innovation's build. He's even got the couple spider mines. So this is basically the same build as last game. Oh, that, that's oh, it. painful. Playing with fire. Yeah, it's pretty much an identical build once more. And uh, we can see that third command set pretty damn quick again. This time, though, however, he's going to have to worry about defending against this Banshee. That's something he didn't have to worry about in the previous game. But mm. he does have a Viking and he does have that Raven in case there would be Cloak Banshee. So I guess innovation is more than fine for now. Yeah, I think he's actually happier with this game than the last because when you get a Banshee this quickly, that Marine Siege Shank attack that we saw before, yeah, if be he does try to go for it, it's going to be way slower. And that's really going to help him out. He'll definitely have his tanks out in time for something like that. But as we see from Tasia, double eBay going up. So yeah. it looks like he's getting ready for that long game. Yep, he's not trying to hit an early timing like he did on Eklund Ways. That third command center for him was almost as quick as the one of Innovation, or it might even be like spot on at the same exact time. Uh, so, well, he's five seconds behind, but it doesn't... No, it's, it's pretty much the exact same thing. So, Tasia this time is focusing on the long economic game. And this is actually really cool. We're not going to see them go Marine Tank against Marine Tank. But what we are going to see is Tasia go up against one of the best Terran players in the world in the TVT when it's Mech against Bio. Uh, that's going to be super yeah. fun, too. And it's not with one of those builds where you have to damage them, which makes it all the better. They already have their third command centers making into orbitals. This is going to be a wild macro game here, Rotterdam. And... The one thing I'm a little bit afraid about, if innovation defends against drops very well, this map can be split pretty yep. easily by Siege Shanks. I don't think that innovation is going to move out until he's like being close to maxed out or at least have like plus two on his mech units. He's just going to throw up a crazy amount of turrets by the time mm. he actually wants to move out. But for now, he's just like, all right, for now, on, I'm just going to defend. I'm going to defend with my Hellbats. I'm going to make sure that my tanks are sieged up in good defensive positions. So the same thing as last time won't happen. And you know, we will see. We see that 1-1 is already more than halfway done for Teja. So, uh, you know, bio-upgrades well on the way. And he's going to have to find an opening. But are there any openings against someone like Innovation? Well, right this second, I would say no. You know, he's even patrolling the map right now with his Vikings and Raven, making sure no medevac drops are going to fly in. And this will buy him some time until he wants to spend his minerals on those missile turrets. And then at which point, of course, those will go back into his main army. But... I like this, this this kind of scouting maneuver that we're seeing here. Might drop an auto turret as well, oh. trying try to get the achievement. Kill like 30 <laughs> SUVs with auto turrets. That was such a weird achievement. If he was going for that achievement in WCS, that is <laughs> one of the most cocky things I've ever heard. Ooh, I like this move though. Yeah. And he does pull him away, but you know what? If you have all this extra energy and you don't need it yet, you know his Marauder timings are not there yet. That's a good move. And I love this as well. He was pulling a, or distracting Teja a little bit with that Seeker missile. And at the same time, trying to run in. Uh, did manage to kill four SUVs throughout the entire game. So, you know, it's something. It's mm -hmm. not massive. It's not 26 like we saw in game one. But, you know, four <laughs> SUVs is better than zero. Yeah, you know, slowly but surely, as long as he can trade some of his minerals, some of his energy to kill off SCVs, that's going to be painful for Teja. Uh, in the meantime, they have very mm -hmm. similar army supplies as we see, very similar worker supplies. The game is pretty much dead even. I can't yeah. really point to who's winning. Although I do have to say with the map and how it's going, I do prefer Innovation's position a bit. I don't yeah. think Teja can break him anytime soon. And it's going to be so hard, man. It's all going to come down to that first moment when... Oh, that Wintermine could have been really scary, yeah. but he, he spotted it. Well done. 
you know, Teja's gonna have to find that small moment where he's able to fight only half the army of innovation or is somehow able to drop him. He cannot take a horrible fight. On Newkirk, if you lose a lot of fire units, you know, that mech army is knocking on your front door mm. in no time and from that point on, you have not even an option anymore to be aggressive and the moment that you're defending against a pushing mech player, you're pretty much dead. Like, there's almost no way to break it. It's so true. The best you can hope for is some sort of base trade, but, uh, you know, innovation really tying up all of his defense so tightly. I do like that Teja took the third base that's closer to the mech player here, though, because, you know, what if it does get into a crazy game? At least he's already mined out most of that base. <laughs> that is true. We see two Hellbats being picked up this time by a couple of those SCVs. Uh, Teja not taking any damage from Hellbats as of yet. Um, you know, I really do wonder, though, like, Teja, when do you want to engage his army? Like, I'm just thinking ahead of the situation <laughs> right now. We're not there yet. But what would possibly be a good moment for him to start at least some sort of a fight? I don't know. I really it's, don't know. It's hard to say, but if we take a look here, right, they're both getting their fourth command centers, so they're going to be expanding again. But very notably, Teja does have double siege shank production. So I think what he's going to do is get some sort of soft contain going where, you know, he has a lot of siege tanks. He's kind of controlling the map overall. And that's the hardest thing to break as a mech player against the bio player. If they have a lot of siege tanks sieged up there, if you unsiege and try to attack in, they're going to stem forward. Once more, we have a small, a small Hellion run by. It's going to be a big of a few SVs. I totally agree with you then, because if you take a look at the army composition right now, mm -hmm. we can see it's 12 siege tanks against eight. Sure, 12 is better, but eight is pretty damn close. But then there are 20 Marauders against only 16 Hellbats and 46 Marines. So right now, it's safe to say that Tasia's army is way, way stronger than the Army of Innovation. Oh, certainly. If these two fight, I mean, Tasia would have to stem into this to have a chance to lose the fight. Yes. Uh, but then that would be a pretty good chance to lose it. Is he actually? No, he's not going to do that. He's going to siege up. And as he rightfully should, now he is uh, stemming in there a little bit. The siege chain is giving a lot of extra fire as well, but a lot of those bio units going down. That actually went pretty good for innovation. He got a lot of free shots off because Teja felt he wasn't sure whether or not he wanted to commit. And this was the first bad fight he took against Mech. And there are only so many bad fights you can take against Mech. Yeah. Once you are the bio player, sure, you're going to have to trade eventually. But that was actually a very expensive trade for Teja. Yeah, he really lost a lot more than what he wanted to there. Now, he has an okay bank, and he's still mining well, but, you know, he actually had about a 20 supply lead when he walked yep. across the map, and now suddenly that lead is in Innovation's pocket. So if I'm Innovation, I'm looking at this situation saying, thank you, yeah, thank you for that gift. He's like, that went good. I wasn't sure about yeah. this map, but uh, uh, there goes that full wall of turrets. I think that's so smart. It's really better to overreact than underreact. Mm. Innovation also didn't move those tanks despite the pressure from the north, and that shows like that was a brilliant move for now. Even though this orbital is taking a crazy amount of damage, but it should survive. Oh, it's just barely so. Maybe one or two more volleys would have gotten it there. But Innovation, of course, knew he could get that out. Yeah. Now, a lot of scans being used to spot each other's armies. What are they doing? They have to know where they are. It actually becomes more important than those extra minerals when you're maxed out. Does Innovation really need more minerals now? No, he has his turret line. He's maxed out with siege tanks. He's not planning on losing many units. He has six manifacts out on the map as well, and he has 17 Hellbats, so he's definitely going to try to drop a couple of Hellbats on top of those Siege Tanks of Tasia. Because sure, Tasia is going bio, but he also has plenty of Siege Tanks to rely on. And if Innovation is somehow able to connect those manifacts and dropping those Hellbats on top of those tanks, it would be fantastic for him. Do you think that Tasia should maybe think about switching into Sky Terran at some point here? You know, it's such a hard transition to make, though, because yeah. it's so expensive. And, you know, so far, this has been a reasonable economic game for him, but nowhere near the point where he's like, all right, let me drop four star points. And, <laughs> yeah. you know. Not quite yet, but we do have him dropping four Hellbats over here. Not really doing the most damage to that planetary. I do like that he chose a planetary at that spot yeah. to really stop drops like this that you know Innovation is going to want to do. Well, those are Hellbats are actually in a really funny position right now, but able to pick up a few SUVs and slow down those command centers. And he does see that those are a, a couple starports oh, building star as well. Ports they yeah. were, yes. So that's, that tells him that at least Tage is considering Sky Terran. It's good to have the starports ready, yep. even if you're not ready to transition, because you might have to at the drop of a hat. Exactly. You know, that saves you a good minute when you actually want to do it. Both players still very even in supply. Tage is stemming in right now, finding a couple of tanks from Innovation completely off guard. 
Really nice move there. That was really good by Teja. And he needs to do that like six, seven more times mm -hmm. against a mech player, because that's just the way it is. That was a great trade, but that doesn't mean like, all right, now I'm so far ahead that I can stim in. No, you're going to have to keep doing that, keep doing that, and eventually there's that moment where you can, you know, go YOLO swag with your stim and just go <laughs> all out and never go home. You know, that's exactly what I was going to say, go YOLO swag with it, but uh, you beat me to it, Rotterdam. Now we do have him starting to push in once again. Not a lot of siege tanks right here. And in fact, we don't see any point defense drones, so they break through quite a few tanks again. Uh, once more, this is great, Bateza. That's trade number two. That was absolutely fantastic for him. Just a couple of bio units. And uh, right now, actually, he's going to be able to get uh, a couple of tanks in. Almost in the range of the mineral line, at least in, uh, in range of this uh, refinery line. <laughs> if that's even a thing. It is a thing now. <laughs> the refinery line? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, well, you know what? Innovation's getting pretty annoyed by this. It looks like he's getting ready to actually make a move. Now, he's going to try to clean out some of these medevacs if possible. And, oh, actually, quite a few of those do get picked off. But this is a huge siege line. Now, see, this is how you play bio tank against mech. They this just, is great. They're just doing this fantastic while. That's nice. Oh, my God. With only one helmet, the innovation. With, one, with two helmets, he just killed four it's, tanks. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Is there any limit to the power of the Hellbat? That's <laughs> <laughs> Even when they're not actually fighting. Yeah. His damage had nothing to do with those tank kills. So Innovation strikes back and picks up a couple of tanks. And actually, these tanks look very exposed right yeah. now. Yeah. This might be the moment where Innovation can fight back and actually break through. He's got a way better set of vision with all those Vikings. It's really making the Medivac stay quite a, uh, quite a ways back. Well, if he drops those helmets right now, he's going to get those tanks for free. At least a couple of them. You know what, though? Uh, Tasia's actually switching into a lot of Vikings right now, but hold on. We actually have Innovation pushing oh. forward at the moment. He's sending his Medivacs out. They actually have a lot of Hellbats in it that he hasn't dropped out yet. Wow, that was a great trade for Innovation. And I think for Tasia right now, he just has to cut his losses over here on the south side and regroup his army on the north. That was great by Innovation. Mm -hmm. Very well done. Realized that his army was so much stronger there and went for it. Uh, those mech upgrades really starting to kick in for him as well. He's on 3-2. And I believe that the tanks from uh, Tasia are just on... 2-0. Yeah, that's right. And here we go. Yeah, Innovation's actually pushing forward once again. The Siege Tanks don't have any cover, though. He drops a lot of Hellbats on the rest of the units, but he is losing quite a few of his Siege Tanks. Yeah, he's winning the fight on the north while losing on the side, but he did have a couple of tanks to fall back on. So eventually, Innovation is forced to pick off, but I still think it's safe to say that that was a very good fight for Innovation once mm. more. You know, he does continue to push forward, and he still has 14 tanks, even adding in Widow Mines now, which is really interesting to see. I don't normally see that added in at this point with this composition, but... Oh, I guess a lot of big group of Marauders oh. stemming in. It might actually work out. Yeah, and you know what? Like, if any drops try to come, anything like that, you know, he is a little bit low on his Viking count right now. Huh, huh. That's, I can't wait to see what he actually wants to do with, with Widow Mines at this point. Innovation being uh, pretty much maxed out right now, and it's going to take his fifth base as well. And that's the moment where, as a mech player, you're going to be like, all right, I have a nut to leave behind mm -hmm. and still be aggressive, because this moment on my economy is going to be so good. I can lose things over and over again as long as I can get something done with it, as long as I can, you know, perhaps get my opponent on lockdown or at least get a great contain somewhere on the map. It is going to be worth it for me, because I am in the yeah. position right now. I can trade out these expensive mech units. That is, it's so true. And right now, we actually have for Tasia just six siege tanks and that's against 20 for innovation 20 siege tanks that is so many siege tanks and they will obliterate everything as long as they're in siege mode the marine count is also surprisingly high for tasia which i'm not sure if that's a great idea we see secret missiles going down as well and a couple of helmets being dropped uh so far not a real engagement yet Man. Well, that was that was a different little <laughs> scuffle. I haven't seen one quite like that before. Innovation continuing to push forward now. Oh. Tage is stimming, but oh, he's in kind of a bad spot here, trying to split up his units, but he's really stuck in this little choke point. Those helmets are going to die immediately, but he did lose a lot of tanks once more. He does keep a lot of units alive, but he needs a higher Marauder count. Right now, he only has 11 Marauders. That's just not good enough. Well, oh, unless you are able to drop on top of the tanks immediately. Really nice drop there by Tasia, wow. and look at that. Cleans up a lot of siege tanks, and Tasia now starting to fight back. Innovation sieging up at that fifth base. 
but he's lost a huge chunk of his siege tanks. In fact, he's lost half of them. Innovation got a little bit too reckless with his helmets in the previous fight, and after he lost all of them, Tejas like, cool, that means I can just drop on top of your tanks, because mm -hmm. if you have no helmets, my drops are going to be really effective, and suddenly, Tejas puts himself in a pretty sexy position as he's mining off six bases. And look at this, another big drop coming in. Where are the Vikings? Where is the anti-air for innovation? It just isn't there. Drops on top of these siege tanks, and this fifth base could be in trouble. Reinforcements coming in, though. Helbert's trying to make a final stand, but one more tank is going down. Deja and Need is crushing innovation right now. Oh my god, and this is what we were talking about before Rotterdam. Deja doing such a great job against this great mech player that is innovation. He's holding tight wow. for now. But Tasia was down for a long time by 50 supply in this game. Yep. And still one mistake out of innovation, and Tasia pummels him back. And we have the first tour on the map now as well, but what a beautiful game this has been by Tejo so far. The first fight didn't go all that well. After that, he did so many fights right, and it's so hard to pick the right fights if you are playing Bio against Mac. It's a skill that only very, very few yeah. Terrans have in the world, but so far Tejo is displaying it. Well, Tejo is still trying to push forward here. Uh, this could be a little bit of an overextension, I would say. That's a lot of siege tanks out back that Innovation has. He definitely has to be careful. You cannot get too over here. Oh, There's still oh. a tour as well. Helmet's coming in. He might actually lose a lot of these bio units. Uh, he might lose some of these siege tanks as well, and uh, he takes down quite a few again. Yeah, that was a little bit risky for Teja. He lost a lot of that. These two Hellbats, or three Hellbats, able to pick up both tanks, and Innovation is still even able to pick up these Hellbats as well, doing that very good. Excellent trade there. Teja does have a bank, though. He doesn't have much gas, by the way, which is surprising, considering he's a Marine tank player. You know, he hasn't actually taken too many of his gases this game as well, but look at this. He's still just flying around, utilizing his medevacs, picking off any siege tank he can, and uh, in the meantime, trying to defend his, his little expansions all around the map. He really needs to take at least one more additional uh, refinery or two of them at one of those bases because he's going to mine yeah. out some of his other refineries That's soon as well. This is why, as you said, he's so high in his marine count. Yeah. He actually just doesn't have the gas to afford what he wants because he is making so many siege tanks. And there, as we say that, Rotterdam, a couple more geysers going up. Yeah, something he could have done a little bit quicker, but of course there is so much action all around the map. We can't get too harsh on Tejo over here as he's playing an absolutely phenomenal TBT. Yeah. And he is in a winning position right now. This is almost his game to lose, I'd say. Look at that bank. If he's able to spend that bank right now, he's up 50 supply easily. You know, I, I gotta say, I agree with you there. Tasia definitely has the lead here. If Innovation wants to win this game, this game, I think, is gonna have to go for at least another 20 minutes for Innovation to end up actually fighting back and taking it. <laughs> you just, I don't, I'm not sure how to feel about that. <laughs> 20 Excited minutes. Excited is how, Rotterdam. 20 minutes. That's yeah. A, no, that's a 50 that's... minute game? It definitely could be. If, you know, innovation holds tight yeah. against all this aggression for Tasia. I know? just thought you were going to say something like, he definitely needs to secure one more base. I'm going to be like, yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. But 20 minutes. Well, this is actually is a super big drop for Tasia, but he's losing a lot of these medevacs immediately. He does get a couple of marauders and marines in reasonable position, but this was not cheap. You know, he's killing a lot of siege tanks, and he's going to get a few of his units out. I don't think that was a very cost-effective drop, though, and perhaps he doesn't have to be that cost-effective as long as he's able to spend his money and recycle units, mm. but, you know, he is off one base, or even... He was even two bases ahead of his opponent, so it's fine to make trades like this. Intercepting these two medevacs and picking off those helmets, that's really nice as well. You know, I think he might be trying to utilize his tempo at this point, saying, okay, I am up that one base, I've got a lot of production going. If I just start sacrificing, 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 I can replenish and he cannot. Siege tank went up as well quite a bit ever since he took those additional refineries because he was at two tanks and now he's at eight tanks again. And eight tanks is good enough to at least get a couple of mm. strong defensive positions out on the map. Now this is... I want you to guess, Rotterdam, as far as resources lost, what do you think it looks like? Um... Uh, well, before, I think that Innovation lost a little more, but now I think that Teja lost a good 5,000 more. They're within 400 minerals of each other wow. as far as units lost right now. It's absolute madness how close this game truly is, how back and forth it's been. It's a 32-minute game, and we're within 400 minerals. <laughs> it's, it's insanity. But, uh, you know, Teja does have that extra base, so, you know, that's something that's going to pay off over time. But Innovation definitely has to sit back. He does need to definitely take another base, I would yeah. say. And, uh oh, this this could be brutal. A couple of these tanks are quite exposed, though, because most of these units still are going to have to reinforce this army from Innovation from the south side. But that's still a lot of tanks. But he is forced to abandon this base, and that's a, not a big win for Tejan. 
And look at that, Innovation Supply falling down once again. And oh, but that's a nice drop oh. there. He just keeps doing this. Oh, and I love how he's doing that as well. Picking them up, making sure that the tanks recycle their mm. cooldown, and then they're all going to fire once more. Those small things, but he's just taking a hell of a drop to the next level right now. But above all, that was still good for Tasia. Yeah, this is, it's amazing what Innovation's doing to hold on against a Tasia that I think would have killed any other player by now. Yes, uh, Tasia, I mean, during all this, Innovation did manage to cure that base, though. It's kind of like the odd base. It's like, it's so close, but no one ever really takes yeah, it. Yeah, that's true. This is like, it's you know, in such a weird little spot. Yeah. This is like, no, I already took the base all the way to the top side, and then I take that one. Because if we look at Tasia as well, he took every single base besides that one. But, you know, Innovation uh, was able to get away with this, and... All the sensor towers help out a lot as well, making that a little bit easier for him to secure it. Yeah, it's almost like the Olympic rings at this point, but <laughs> can he actually hold on to this base? Because Tage is coming in and a big stim does go down. A lot of Hellbats there in the front. They're going to die before the tanks even get sieged. And I'm getting a little bit nervous here for Innovation. Those tanks are pretty damn exposed. The Tor is there as well, but there are still so many backup tanks. Innovation is losing a crazy amount of siege tanks, but I do think that he will survive, at least for now. I, I, I love Tasia before Rotterdam, but after this game, I'm becoming even twice again his fan. He is playing the most fantastic bio against Mech that I've ever seen right now. I cannot believe the things he's breaking from Innovation, but here we have once again, Innovation takes the supply lead. That's the thing, though. It's never for free, and if Tasia is going to lose these four siege tanks, which is going to look like as these helmets are going to march in, that's a beautiful trade for Innovation. At the same time, he's active with helmets on the other side of the map, slowing down the economy of his opponent and you know Tejas also beautiful bang that he had a good six seven minutes ago now it's gone and he doesn't even have a supply lead anymore so yes he is playing beautiful but it's so hard to figure out when you have to push the issue or once you're overstepping your boundaries if you're playing uh, it, yeah. Bio versus it's, Mech. It's one of the most difficult things in the game to identify. That, there's no question. You're completely right there, Rotterdam. And Tasia's trying to feel his way through. You know, this is still anybody's game. Tasia can come back from these situations. In fact, look at this. He finds an area where there's not that much defense. Picks a little bit off. He's keeping innovation busy right now. And that's something he has to do as well, because if you are playing Bio against Mech, you definitely don't want to have less supply. Like, that's the moment where you definitely yeah. don't want to take fights anymore. So right now, Tasia is just stalling. There are plenty of minerals left. Look at that next base that Tasia is taking. He's just like, <laughs> all right. And look, he's trying to land a command oh. center on top of it. Well, this is awkward. <laughs> yeah, this is, oh, that, that's his base, man. I don't know what Tasia's <laughs> doing over there, but. Uh, we have another nice drop going down, picking That's off a few shanks, picking off some Hellbats, some missile turrets. Tasia just keeps going. And look at this, now he's got the 25 supply lead. In the meantime, we do have Innovation trying to turtle the center of the map. And this base is so exposed right now. Okay, Innovation comes in with the reinforcements, drops Hellbat. Now this DVD is going madness. This is almost like the, mar the action that a Marine tank game will give you, but then it's uh, actually... Bu bu Mech yeah. against Bio. No, I'm like is, losing my words This right is now. the ultimate TVT to watch right yeah. here, Rotterdam. And I gotta say, as far as this goes, it's so funny to watch because there's no anti-air on Innovation's side. He does, just doesn't have Vikings. He doesn't have time or money to make Vikings because of how aggressive Tage is being, which is making it even harder. And look at this. Tage is over here exactly where Innovation is not. And in fact, he is definitely going to force a lift again at the fifth base. You know, we always say that this map is sort of easy to split. I feel that there are so many battlegrounds on this map right now. It's almost impossible for the yeah. back army to cover all sides. And you know, this little funky move, sure it seems silly, but it distracted Innovation. And that's why those tanks were so uh, out of position. Look at all those mules. Oh, and look at this. A lot of Hellbats being dropped all over the siege tanks right now. A lot of damage being done, but Tasia rallying in more and more units. Can Innovation actually break through? He's picking up those Hellbats once more. He's going to have to drop them on top of the army if he wants to be able to connect. Uh, the, that Orbiter is still alive, and even if all those mules are going to expire, he took away some minerals <laughs> on the Innovation side of the map. And as bizarre as that may sound, that might actually play a factor because, you know, we're already 10 minutes in your 20 minutes prediction. Yes, it, 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 I tell you, it's it's a true thing. And in fact, in split map scenarios on smaller maps like this one, uh, yeah. that actually happens where even stealing your opponent's minerals it's becomes great. part of the strategy because you're both going to mine out. Uh, but it's so bizarre because this used to be a map where you say like, all right, it's pretty easy to split or as a mech player, you get up to four bases and then you can move out. Tasia never gave Innovation the chance to move out, but at the same time, Innovation just kept hanging in as a champ. But this time, however, this is a great move once oh, more God. by Tasia. This is a big push. He's going to be able to take out this orbital, and he took out a lot of siege tanks as well. That move was entirely too good, I would say, Rotterdam. That 
was a hurtful moment for innovation to lose that command center, to lose so many units, to be broken down there. Maybe this is part of the reason we don't see people expand there very often, but a great move by Teja. But once more, you could say that Teja perhaps overstepped his boundaries after that a little bit, because he lost a lot of bio units. Still pretty much training even in the unit loss research step. We can see that Teja lost a little bit more, mm. but it's still borderline even. Uh, but, you know, he doesn't have the supply advantage to go absolutely crazy. Yeah, and in fact, right now, this is he's going up for that base for innovation. I don't even know what Sorry. number base I'm on anymore. I don't know what to call it, Rotterdam. Mm, but six. this is going to pull his opponent up. But again, with these medevacs, he can actually lift off Whoa, those worlds. Those medevacs oh! are empty. Oh no, that is actually terrible for innovation to lose so many medevacs. Wow. A huge part of his defense has been dropping Hellbats on the army of Teja. And we can see Teja picking up those units. Now he's going to drop this base as well. Teja is all over the place. He is bringing TVT to a next level right now. He truly is. Is. This he is just so finds every single location to possibly do damage. And as you can see, these guys are both wow. hitting uh, you know, up and down from oh, even 400 APM I saw there for a moment. <laughs> But losing all those Menevacs, that's such a big blow, because look at the gas bank. Innovation does not have a lot of gas piled up. He's not able to just muster out six Menevacs. And as you mentioned as well, he needs those Menevacs to drop the Hellbats on top of the army of Tasia. That's been his game plan throughout the entire game, or at least one of his cool moves to even out these battles. It's now he can't do that anymore. You know, he can't break siege positions without a lot of Menevacs full of Hellbats. That's for sure. That's how he's been doing it every time. And look at this. I mean... Tasia isn't actually mining very much right now, but he is stopping so much of the mining of innovation. You know, this base and the fifth keep on getting attacked. It's, it, this is crazy. I have no idea who's going to end up winning this. I think that, well, I really love Tasia's position right now, even though, of course, he still has to be careful with those trades. Uh, he's going to be able to pick up that medevac as well. Well done. What an intensive game for both of these players, because, yeah, you, every now and then you play a 40-minute game, but how often do you play a 40-minute game, which is non-stop action since minute 12? In TBT with yes. a mech player on New Kirk Precinct, Rotterdam. Let's get all the facts <laughs> out there. This is madness. We may never see something like this again. You know, we often say that the mech is pretty mobile. Max seem pretty damn mobile, this, <laughs> this map, for some reason, which is ridiculous because Innovation had to reposition his army every single moment. There's no, there's not been a minute where he could have a couple of siege sacks for two, three minutes in the same position. Yeah. He had to run his mech army all over the place. It is so true, and look at this. We actually have Seeker missiles going down. Some beautiful Seeker missiles coming out of Tasia there. That extra gas really yeah. paying off. He's starting to do some extra damage with these, and a big supply lead and another forced lift. And look at this big mech, uh, bio army from Tasia suddenly. Like, Tasia, where did you get this from? You've been throwing away all your bio units mm -hmm. all the time. You know, you, he's at 120 supply, then you blink your eyes and he's at 180 supply with 20 <laughs> yeah. marauders and a lot of marines. It's just like, sweet Jesus, where does it come from? I have no idea. I think the barracks, but I might be wrong. Now, we actually have a banshee being made by Teja as well as he starts to push this back once again. That is a huge amount of marauders and we don't have any point defense zones. We have so few siege tanks and I think he might actually break innovation here as well. But there are a lot of helmets being dropped on top of these bio units every time. It looks like, all right, Teja's going to clear everything up. And then suddenly innovation is like, no, I have a surprise for you. I still have a few Hellbats in my Metavax and the innovation sort of survives, mm -hmm. but that was pretty okay for Teja. You know, I think that Teja is about to get a huge advantage here, Rotterdam. We've had no anti-air for innovation for so long, he's actually starting Banshee production. And if you fly over with even two Banshees, the tanks cannot remain sieged because you will kill them far too quickly, which is going to force him to lose all the ground he's gained through these fights. So oh, that SV train is oh very stacked up. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh. <laughs> That would have been the best gift. <laughs> uh, one of the but I do agree with you. Here comes that first bench already forcing these tanks to unseize. There is not a single bit of anti-air. Uh, there were a few tours every now and then, but now there is not a single tour out on the map. One is halfway in production, but still, this single bench is pushing this entire mech army back and allows Innovation or Tasia once more to pick off that base. It's insane, man. He does have some Vikings now, so that's good. You know, at least he has some Vikings. It's going to help out against some medevacs as well. He's got to be careful, though. He doesn't want to lose those. Oh, painful. But he doesn't lose them before he picks up that Banshee. But look at that army from Tasia. Look at that concave as well. Yeah, he's got a great spread here, but those medevacs, they oh. are back up for innovation. He's dropping a lot of Hellbats out all over the army, and in fact, those Sea Shanks could be in trouble, but all of his Sea Shanks are dying as well. Everybody's in trouble then. There are secret <laughs> missiles going down on Sea Shanks. That was a great flank by Tasia, but somehow, some way, innovation survives again. He should have died like nine times by now. Every I, cat would have been dead. I, I, <laughs> 
you know, in, in the words of your your famous co-caster, I don't know, Kev, man. <laughs> this this is madness. I, what is what is even happening here? Tejas, he is maintaining a supply lead for the past several minutes, yeah. which is good for him. But so, I mean, he's barely even mining at this point as well. But Innovation is actually getting really reckless right now with four siege tanks. He's going to lose all of them, but he will be able to clean up this little bio squad. But he's taking a lot of damage on his side of the map as well, losing another base. What is Tasia going to do with those units? Is he going to pull them back or is he going to keep attacking? Well, you know what? If he kills his base, which is basically what's happening here, where is Tasia really mining from? He's oh. barely mining on these other bases, but hold on, we actually have Tasia coming in and starting to clear it up again. Oh, that's so unfortunate for these Hellbats. We're not enough medevacs, but now instead the other Hellbats are going to be like, all right, well, let's make a final stand. Let's try to push this army back. Everyone's just picking up units right now and throwing around, flying around. I have no idea what I'm seeing. It's wild. Look at the supply at this point. This is becoming an ultimately scrappy game, but I tell you what, when it gets scrappy in a situation like this, I prefer the bio. Me too. You know, the smaller the armies become, the better the bio yeah. is, because it's more mobile. You're able to pick off a few units here and there. Like this Marauder hit squad has the potential to win the game. Yes, it certainly does. He's starting to run in. There's a lot of Hellbats still, a lot of Metavacs full of those Hellbats as well. But oh my god, they almost get that... that <laughs> uh, there are a few Marines, not many, but yeah. these three Marines... They might go down. Yeah, yeah, it does go down. A nice kill there. I don't think it's the most impactful thing, but... Uh, you know what? There's not a lot of mining left right now for innovation. He's almost mined out at that top base. That is true, but what you can say as well is that Teja has been mining a little bit more throughout the entire game. Mm. So the longer this goes on, the more money that will be left for innovation in the long run, because Teja has did much more economic damage to him, and he's just been out mining him a little bit. Well, you know, that's that's true. In fact, it's going to come down to just the bottom bases in a minute here, I think. And he runs the SCVs knowing he can't stop that. In the meantime, a counterattack down at Teja's last mining base. He's got so many oh mules there. God. What am I even seeing? I have never seen so many mules oh on one base. Oh, my God. Teja just mining insanely there. And he does clear this base out once again, which leaves no mining for Teja. You know, right now it's a little bit tricky as... Uh, the armies may not seem all that big anymore in the army supply tab, but both players lost so many SCVs that this is basically a real army supply. They got roughly around 20 workers. Tasia does have a very nice and healthy lead, and that's how army supply lead. But we've seen before what these Hellbats can potentially do. Certainly, and look at this. I really like this. He's, he's basically forcing Thors out of his opponent. Thors that can't be purchased right now. Uh-oh, it looks like Teja kiting back against these very slow Hellbats. He's doing a great job. That Viking switch is so freaking smart. Now, once more, uh, Teja has air control. This one Benchy is going to be able to kill a lot of things. And above all, he's oh. not able to drop Medivac. Oh my god, good mind. Well, Drilling Claws. <laughs> it paid off finally, Rotterdam, killing but, that off. But still, like the biggest weapon of innovation has been dropping Hellbats on yeah. top of that army, which is not possible anymore because he has no more Medivacs because those Vikings sniped them all. Teja is really yes. like just playing next level TVT right now. He truly is. Look at the supply differential. He might be able to just break him right here. This has been the biggest lead he had throughout the entire game. Yeah. Well, here we go. This could be it. A huge drop going down on all the sea chinks. The, the Hellbats actually out of position here. And I think this is oh it. Oh my G -G. god. Tasia. Tasia with a victory like none I have ever seen. My god. You know, those, whoa, those first whoa. two games was like, okay, you know, they're very good. Goosebumps all over Dan's arm. I have confirmation he does have nerd chills in real life. That was unbelievable. Oh my God. We were saying it before this started. Tasia, probably the best bio versus mech player in the world. He proved it 10 times over in that game. That was beautiful. It was fantastic. I can't even believe what we just witnessed. You know, bio versus bio can be really beautiful and it can be like kind of the quickest way to play this game in general when all the medevacs are just flying around. This bio versus mech game that we just see was some, was some of the fastest TVT I've ever seen. Just There was non-stop action. Innovation did a fantastic job at remobilizing his mech army all the time because it's so hard, they're so slow. Mm. Somehow he was always there. But Teja was just a little too good. Man, Teja just yeah. showing once more, he is not just good against foreigners. Teja is good against anyone. Uh, anyone and everyone. This is innovation we're talking about. The player thought to be the best in the world, and Teja just brought him to the limit.
and surpassed it. And you know what? That also means that the loser of Finale, uh, or Duck Duck, I should say, and Naniwa is going to have to play against Innovation. Oh my god, insane, insane. In fact, I'm sure that's over because it was such a long yes. series. Uh, so wild. So before man. we're going to throw it in an interview, let's just uh, give you guys a small yeah, a bit update that. for the audience here. Oh, uh, it seems like uh, Duck Duck was able to win that series uh -oh. two to nothing. Nanawa so, against Innovation. That's going to be a hard one wow. for the foreigner. That's going to be uh, such a fantastic matchup, though, as well. Mm. Well, <laughs> well, unfortunately, we won't be casting no. that. We're going to be casting Duck Duck going up against Tasia, which, <laughs> which is going to be fantastic, anyways. If it's half as good as the last series, I'm fine with it. Well, if it's half as good, it's probably the second best game of the <laughs> yeah. year, right? <laughs> <laughs> what a series. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Man, right. we had so many crazy series already. You can really see what WCS is trying to do with these championships, you know, like, okay, in the regionals you have great games, you have great storylines, but every now and then you have some one-sided series, but once you are here, you have the best of the best of every region, and then a region which is perhaps considered inferior to Korea delivers a player like Tasia, and we get games like this. And even earlier today, when Jadon also coming from the American region. That's right. Going up against MC. That series was absolutely insane. We've had two series that you can already like sign up for best series of the year. I know, like, right? They, it, we can close the folder yes. and stamp it and file it right now as far as 2013 goes. But Successful tournament. Oh, my God. Uh, I, I believe that they're ready for this interview. So, Chobra, tell us all what Tasia's thinking right now. All right, so we are here for the interview with the man who just finished a ridiculously, ridiculously long game in that TVT. It's going to be Liquid Tasia. Give him a big round of applause. What a match. I mean, it doesn't matter if this was the winner's match, the first match. To, to interview someone who just came out of like a 50 plus minute game, I just want to know what's going through his brain right now. Says, uh, I'm just speechless and I, I can't blame him. I mean, you know, you're, so much has to be going through his head right now. 어 저희 그럼 이번 이제 매치 정말 이신영 선수를 상대로 했는데 상대 이신영 선수라서 뭐 특별히 더 준비를 해야 되는지 뭐 조금 부담이 된다든지 그런 게 있으셨나요? 어 딱히 준비한 것보다는 최근에 제가 지금 성적이 많이 안 좋기 때문에 꼭 이기자는 생각으로 했어. And you know talking about the matchup against Innovation, uh, Teja says, you know it didn't forced me to prepare anything specifically, but I know I haven't been getting the best results recently, and so I said, you know, I need to win this match, and this match matters so much to me. So, 그러면 그런 생각으로 이번에 들어오셨는데, 첫 게임에 어, 화염 기각병으로 인해서 지셨어요. 첫 세트는. 네. 그때 기분이 어떠셨어요? 그때 원래 화염차에 본, 본진하고 마당이 털렸을 때 게임이 끝나는 건데, 어, 게임은 끝나는 거여가지고 뭐 딱히 신경은 안 썼어. And you know, talking about the first game, losing to those hell bats, Tejo says, yeah, you know, it was already over when I was, you know, pushed out with those hellions, and so I wasn't too worried after that. I knew the game was over, and that was just the first match. 그러면 이제 그 다음에 두째 세트는 이제 이신영 선수가 그 화염 기가병 업그레이드 되기 전에 이제 들어가셨어요. 공격을 하셔서 이기셨는데 그때는 그러면 비슷한 빌드를 할것 같아서 그걸 노리신 건가요? 네. 어, 상대방이 스캔을 때려봤 스캔을 뿌려봤는데 아예 똑같은 빌드더라. 그래가지고 좀 빠르게 이신영 선수가 와도 막을 수 있고 제가 공격 갈수 있는 그런 빌드를 선택했어요. And then talking about game two, of course, we had our Tosses and Ryardim highlighting that Teja had a great timing of pushing him right before the blue flame upgrade finished. And Teja says, yeah, you know, I scanned, and it was the exact same build. So I said, you know, I just need to start fighting right now so that even if Innovation tries to push back, I can win the defense. Or if I charge in, I'm just going to take over his base, and that's what happened. And then, of course, we have the third game. I mean, I don't. E I personally don't even remember what order the battles happened because we had so many for the entire 40 minutes, starting at 12 minutes. But you know, I have to ask, what Tasia was thinking when Innovation just started dropping Hellbats all over his siege tanks? So, 그러면 이제 마지막 세트. 어 정말 왔다 갔다 하다가 중간에 이기시는 듯 했는데 이신영 선수가 화염 기각병을 그냥 계속 
공선 전차 위에다가 드랍을 했어요. 그때 뭐좀 짜증 나시거나 그러셨나요? 어 짜증 나지 않았고 월, 분명 제가 이기는 싸움인데 계속 싸움을 지니까 어, 당황했어 너무. And you know he says I wasn't I wasn't like upset or annoyed, but you know I knew the game was mine. I had to win this game, and it, I was just I was just frustrated at the situation because he kept pushing back in those small skirmishes, and the game kept dragging on. 그러면 그 세트가 계속 지연돼서 혹시 중간에 점점 그런 혹시 겁은 생기셨나요? 어 이러다가 내가 질지도 모르겠다. 네 계속 탱크 위에 폭탄 드랍을 하는데 제 병력이 계속 죽는 거예요. 그래가지고 제가 어 이거 지겠는데 딱 생각했는데 하마터면 질 뻔했어요. 그럼 어떻게 해서 이기시게 된것 같으세요? 어 운이 좋았어요. And so you know I was asking Tasia. Did you ever fear that you were going to lose then? You had the lead. And Tejas says, yeah, I mean, with all those Hellbat drops just dropping on top of my siege tanks, I started losing more units, so I was getting really scared. And, you know, I, I was just very worried about the game. And so I asked, so how did you win? And he's like, well, luck was on my side. Got lucky in the end. Won out enough skirmishes. <laughs> and then the match was his. So I'm going to say, 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 어뭐 어떤 생각으로 이제 준비하실 거예요? 어뭐 김경동 선수도 잘하지만 만약에 제가 승자전에서 진다면은 제 생각엔 이신영 선수를 또 만나게 될것 같아서 꼭 이겨야 될것 같아 생각해. Alright, and then looking towards the winners match of course against Duck Duck, Tasia says, sure, Duck Duck's good, but I feel that if I lose to Duck Duck, I may have to play Innovation again, which I don't want to. So I have to win this match to move on and be done with the group. Once again, give a big round of applause to Liquid Tasia, and now we're gonna throw it to Paul to move on with the rest of WCS Season 2 Finals here at Gamescom. Thank you very much, Chobra, and congratulations to Tasia. Not quite the final of Group C that we thought we might have, and with Naniwa going down as well, it means that either Naniwa or Innovation are going home after the next game. We'll be right back with the winner's final in a few moments' time. But before that, just a quick reminder for you. Carry on with the social media. We'd love to hear your tweets and your thoughts and your favorites. Keep them coming via hash WCS on Twitter. And don't forget to follow at StarCraft. You can also connect with us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash StarCraft. We'll be right back with the winner's final. It's not the one we expected. Tasia takes down the man that couldn't be beaten.